and uh, just uh, uh, praise God for all His strength that He has enabled each one of you, and uh, we just praise God for each one of you who have fasted. Those of you who are here, those of you online, and those of you uh, in Australia, uh, and all over the world, you've been fasting along with us. Uh, remember that this 40-day fast is a connect. Uh, what we have done in A.S. Rock on the 9th and 10th of August uh, to Madaba on the 18th of August and uh, there we will be on the 40th day. And uh, as we come to a close, the Lord has begun to show even more things of uh, the significance of this time period and I uh, understand better now why uh, why we have to do what we need to do in phase one, phase two, and phase three, and uh, why the angels uh, uh, preparing and, and bringing forth all these uh, end time things. <coughs> if you remember, and uh, I checked, uh, I went to check back my uh, autobiography, and I think I didn't mention some details, but I did mention some of the details. Uh, in times of fellowship and on a one-to-one -one basis or a small group meetings that uh, in 1997 about six months uh, about six months after uh, went to Australia that there was appearance of an angel and uh, was taken in a dream vision uh, dream vision because uh, uh, it's not really a dream because it was interactive and my spirit came out but uh, my body was asleep. <clears throat> it was a spiritual experience. And in that uh, vision, it was like uh, the last week before Jesus came. And it seems that everybody knew that uh, Jesus was going to come in exactly one week, which is seven days. And in that vision, uh, that was in 1997, I... Uh, I was uh, the key guy uh, sending people out in teams. It was like Luke chapter 10 was one, uh, Luke chapter uh, 9 was one, Matthew 10 was one, and Jesus was sending his disciples two by two out. And uh, they were going all over the world, many of them. And uh, some of them, when they walk about 10 or 20 paces, uh, they were just transported in the spirit. Some went on conventional means by car, by bus, by uh, airplanes, and uh, various means. But uh, there were people going all over the world, and they were coming and going and preaching. And it was like uh, one week before Jesus came, and we knew we had this just last week in order to tell everybody and tell the whole world that Jesus is coming soon. That was 1997. And uh, then came uh, 2012 when we have all the encounters with the angels, 2013, this year 2014. And over the past two weeks after we built an altar in uh, Singapore on uh, August the 23rd after we came back, and uh, uh, there were more downloads. And uh, recently the Lord has been speaking to me and said, remember the last week that I showed you? in 1997 and uh, that one week and uh, then they say yes and the Lord said that uh, of course the Lord spoke through his angels and sometimes directly and the Lord said that uh, that last week is uh, is like Daniel in Daniel the 70 uh, years became 70 weeks of years and Jesus uh, told me that that last week represents seven weeks of years. Uh, so it was seven times seven. And uh, so the Lord said that uh, from September 18 onwards, uh, he, he brought all those visions to mind because it is on September 18 onwards, 2014, will begin the last seven week of years. Seven times seven. And there will be, set, uh, just as we have been sharing in this End Time Series 3 about how uh, we progressed following the 10 plus 10 plus 10 to 10 years from 2020 to 2030, 2040, 2050, 2060. And that is uh, 
a cycle that, that links to my tenure cycle. Now, there is another cycle that is going on that, uh, that links to the cycles of the planet. And these are 7 times 7. 7 times 7 years. And uh, you notice that 7 times 7 plus 1 makes 50. And uh, whereas the other cycle was 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. So the two cycles do meet. And uh, <coughs> so the Lord says that uh, the countdown begins from September 18, 2014. And I said, Lord, why is that day so important? And, uh, and the Lord began to show me that when we reach September 18, 2014, it is midnight. In terms of the planet Earth, in terms of the history of mankind, we reach the close of time. It begins the end of days and the end of this age. We truly move into the end times. And the Lord says, in the spiritual world, the clock strikes midnight. Now we will always think that when the midnight hour comes, Jesus comes. And the Lord began to show me that while the clocks, the spiritual clock strikes midnight on September 18, 2014, that means that for mankind, their time, their free time, their, their appointed time is completed. The world will start changing. It is on a different time. What kind of time is that? That is what I wanted to show you. Now first, I'll show you some Bible patterns. And then I'll talk about some of these things. <clears throat> in the book of Genesis, because these things are in the pattern of Bible, in the book of Genesis, before the great flood, which was the other judgment, because judgment time has come, once the midnight hour strikes. And in the book of Genesis, Noah was told to prepare the ark. So he did prepare the ark for 120 years. And uh, <clears throat> there came a time when the ark was ready. And the ark was already seven days before the great flood. Exactly seven days before the great flood. So you have in Genesis chapter 6, uh, looking here in verse 13. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. He says, Build an ark. And then he started uh, doing all those things as about 120 odd years before. Then in chapter 7, Finally, after a long, long endeavor, in verse 1, chapter 7, the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark. Now, that's a different thing. Look, chapter 6, verse 14 was, Make yourself an ark. So you have to make an ark. Now in chapter 7, verse 1, Come into the ark. Come into the ark. And uh, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in the generation, you shall take with you seven each of every clean animal, a male and his female, two each of animals that are unclean, a male and his female, also seven each of birds of the air, male and female, to keep the species alive on the face of the earth. For after, in verse 4, after seven days, there is exactly one week's time, for after seven days, I will cause it to rain on the earth, forty days and forty nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. So it was exactly one week before the ark's door closed. 
And uh, that one week was the time that God commanded and through His angels, all the animals start going. So when exactly did Noah shifted into the ark? One week before the flood. Exactly one week. So that one week is an important symbol. The last week. So the Lord tell me that the last week represent like our time and what I saw in a vision in 1997, the last week. And uh, recently, like Daniel, the Lord says, that last week, which I always think, okay, the last seven years are very important. You will hear in my end time series one, series two, that when I talk about it, I say, uh, okay, that represents the last seven years, which are very important, which I know is very important. But then the Lord says, it actually represents seven weeks of years. Seven weeks of uh, no, seven weeks of years. Seven times seven. And uh, so that will be forty-nine years. And uh, until the completion of all things. But Lord says that the countdown begins on September 18. 2014 and a lot told me recently it is midnight it is midnight and there are several things happening and uh, I will give more Bible scriptures before I talk about some of the things happening uh, that will take place uh, if you have your Bible turn with me to the book of uh, Matthew we know Matthew 24 speaks about uh, the end of times. Now the context in Matthew chapter 24 was in verse 3 they asked Jesus, the disciples came to Jesus on the Mount of Olives and said tell us in verse 3 when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? When is it going to be end? And then we all know the, uh, all the descriptions in Matthew chapter 24. But many people don't realize that Matthew 25 is part of the same sermon. You see all the letters in red, if your Bible are letters in red, there's no pause. Remember the chapters and the verses came later when they were printing the Bible. Uh, and, and when they were doing, doing the uh, printing of the Bible and, and getting all those stuff. The original manuscript doesn't have chapters and words. So, if you were reading Jesus' answer, you will read chapter 25 as part of it. And then in chapter 25, when we read, Jesus told two parables, uh, three parables all in. And uh, in verse 1, he says, The kingdom of heaven, remember he's answering the question, when will the end of the age be? He says, The kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Notice, at midnight. At midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go gather rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. I remember Noah's ark after one week. It was not Noah who shut the door. It was too big for Noah. The Lord shut the door. So there is a closing time. The door was shut. And here the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, 
Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. See, that's where the day and hour is. But you will know the season, and we do know the year. We need to get ready for the Lord's return. Now, I explain this parable more because all these we now understand what it means. As, as I said, I'm the voice that cry at me. The Lord told me that on February the 9th, 2014, after I, He gave me a new name, and He told me a few other things. And uh, also He told me about some prophecies in the Old Testament that I fulfilled. And uh, when the time is right, then I'll talk about that. But now we just look at this uh, place in Matthew. And the Lord says, one of the few things the Lord told me was this. Uh, I have not shared much of my experience on February the 9th. When the time is right, I'll share more. The Lord says, uh, He took me in the dimension of the Spirit. Now, in the dimension of the Spirit, time on earth might look the same. But it's like many months there. For those of you who went with me in February, it uh, looks like a few hours. But it's like spending a months in the Lord. And one of the things the Lord told me was, He says, uh, you're supposed to lead an exodus of millions of people. Now I know, at that time 50 million, now I'm claiming 450 million. The Lord says, in the time of the Old Testament, when Moses came out, the Exodus, uh, as far as we know, uh, among scholars, we know that it's roughly uh, at the maximum of 3 million people. Now the Lord said, the Exodus that we're going to leave is greater in magnitude than the Old Testament. And then the Lord said, uh, several things are very important. He says the Exodus is very important to him. And uh, the building of the white buildings, and he showed me the white buildings. And actually, they are like buildings of uh, that that uh, that gather the glory of God in worship, uh, where angels come to and fro. The Lord says, for the Old Testament, look at how I work in Moses' life. He's predestined before he was born. I was there from his birth. I looked after him for 40 years and then 40 years in the wilderness and brought him in in the fullness of time. And the Lord showed me, showed me my past and showed me all those things. Now, I've been to the spiritual world before, but he was very specific. And he said, he showed me a few things and uh, said that uh, uh, for this work, don't you think I would have predestined you? If I did that for the Old Testament, how much more in the new? Yes, Lord. They begin to show me a lot of things. And, uh, uh, and I realize how awesome the task is. That uh, if for Exodus of 3 million, uh, so much predestination, well, what do you think about Exodus of 50 to 150 million? What do you think about uh, the end time move to lead the end time move? These are things that are prepared way before. The foundation of the earth. Everything is assignment. And I share this not just to uh, for you to know about me. It's also for you. Because every one of you who have a part in the glorious church and in the rapture for the second gen third generation, you are specially chosen too. Don't you think that every one of you who will be in a glorious church and every one of you will be in a rapture. And the Lord showed me. He knows exactly how many people there will be in the glorious church. There will be not one more and not one less. He knows exactly how many people there will be in a rapture. Not one more, not one less. He knows exactly the population of the earth when the rapture takes place. Not one more, not one less. Everything is predestined. Your destinies are all predestined. 
So one of the first things we see in Matthew 25 is, uh, is what I call the midnight. And then the Lord told me, Matthew 25 has come on September 18, 2014. The midnight hour. And I talk more about it. I just point to scriptures first. It's my style. I always look at scriptures before I talk about uh, extra biblical revelation. But there's one more parable that is very important. And the other parable, uh, now Matthew 25, the other part, the other parts here are also important, which teach at another time. But now I'd like you to turn to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. In Matthew 13, he actually spoke two parables. One is the sower and the word. And we teach that parable many times about the four different types of ground. And those are what happened throughout the church ages. Do you know there are two parables in Matthew 13? We always quote the parable uh, from verse 18 to 23, which is found in the other cross-references and the other Gospels. How the parable went, uh, the, or the sower, and he sowed the word, and then he fall on different type of ground. That happened throughout church history. But there's another parable that is for the end time, the wheat and the tares. Look at chapter 13, verse 24 onwards. Now, this part is important because chapter 13, verse 24 to 30 is linked to Matthew 25. This parable is a different way of presenting Matthew 25, the Ten Virgins. The two are one. Tonight, I will link them and show it to you. So let's read it first in Matthew 13, verse 24. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain has sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appear. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. You know that enemy, the one who sowed tares, is Satan and his cohorts. The servant said to him, the servants represent the angels. Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, Gather together the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So now it's like the ingathering of the wheat into the barn. September 18, 2014 is so important. It's as important as February the 9, 2012, when the glory come on Pergamos. It is as important as November 14, 2012, when the seven thunders was released in this place. And it's important because there are so many watchers. Now, watchers are what I call the angels who function like scribes, but more than scribes. They are recording things for the end time judgment, and they are recording things in order for all the other angels uh, uh, they are like the lawyers of the angelic kingdom, you can call it. That something is, is, uh, is given permission or whatever things is done, whether a blessing or judgment. <clears throat> this time is so important that there are actually watchers over every single one of your life right now. As we come to the close, uh, coming to another 13 days before September 18. Uh, we've got 13 more days to this 40 day fast. And there will be many great and mighty watchers present when we are on Mount Nebo on September 18, 2014. Very, very important, significant event that is recorded in heaven because it is a midnight hour. And there are several things that take place. And uh, 
uh, I would I will talk about the extra biblical revelation. Seven things take place afterwards. All right. So, um, okay. As a sign from the Lord, there is a uh, person you seated on this area here. You have a very uh, a, a shoulder problem, uh, and uh, uh, if you have that, can can you can you leave your hands right now? To indicate okay the shoulder problem here. Anyone else with a shoulder problem? Okay, there are others. Those of you online with shoulder problem, okay, you have now. Thank you, Jesus, and uh, uh, I'd like you to let lift that shoulder up right now. Thank you, Father. Confirm your word with signs following. In the name of Jesus, let healing flow forth. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, let healing flow forth. Let the life of Jesus give energy to the bones, the tissues, the cells. And let your word and, and the spirit being that works with us in healing, bring healing. I command healing. I command healing. I command anointing to flow forth. In the name above every name, the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We release the spirit beings to heal here in this place and online. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this is a time of the harvest. And September 18 onwards, as the midnight hour comes, what, what, why midnight and what happens at, at midnight in the spiritual realm? Remember here the parable of the wheat and the tares? God did not permit the angels to do harvesting, or as well, even though we have people born again all this. This is technically the end of time, when God began to take the fruit from the earth. And... Uh, because he says, if you do it, it will destroy the wheat. For it's not time for the sickle to start cutting and bringing forth. 2,000 years of church history have come. But on September 18, 2014, as a midnight hour, the time to separate the wheat and the death has come. Now, cross-reference with me to Deuteronomy chapter 16. Deuteronomy chapter 16. And I'll explain why it's seven weeks of years. The Bible has that pattern. Deuteronomy chapter 16. See, everything in the Bible is recorded for our benefit. Like Paul says, the ox that treaded the grain, that was also important. And every little symbol... That's why it pays to know the Bible well. To know every symbol, every line and title on this Word of God. In chapter 16, the Lord says, when He talks about the different uh, festivals and Passover, He says here in verse uh, 9, after He talks about the Passover, He says in verse 9, chapter 16, verse 9, You shall count seven weeks for yourself, Begin to count seven weeks from the time you began to put the sickle to the grain. You notice that? Now you know why the seven last weeks of years? Because on September 18, 2014, the midnight hour has come. I am the voice that cry at midnight. And as the midnight hour comes, it is now harvest time. And from the time that God starts separating the wheat and the tares, and God starts separating and they cannot grow together anymore, there are seven weeks as in the Bible, there are actually seven weeks of days. But in prophecy, it's seven weeks of years. So, although the time has end for mankind, in other words, the harvest is ripe. 
I remember the last vision that I saw was when the message was the harvest is right was long long ago in uh, 78 1978 when I was still in the Baptist seminary and I was doing my field work in police, Kanga police and it was there when I fasted three days without food and water on the third day of the fast I was taken to a valley between two mountains and uh, then I, I know that I saw the big building that represented the church one mountain represents first coming second mountain represents second coming when I came up from that vision the Lord says the harvest is right I know that from then onward God was preparing me for the finale part of my end time call it is like all those years of ministry, all those years of preparation, all the experience I've gathered here and there and all over the place has been preparing me for this final calling that God has reserved me. And this final calling is so important, it entirely changed my name, uh, prepared and turned everything around in a different direction, based me from a different country. And all those things are in order to fulfill the scripture the scripture alright Lord alright ok ok the Lord said what I want to keep back have to be released because he says this hour is important and uh, because when I mention the far country, the Lord says, and uh, the indication for the spirit realm is that you must tell them about this far country. And we know that far country is Australia. And why all those things are happening. Right, Lord? You don't want to do it. Uh, now, I want you to know that uh, in myself, I don't want to do it. But in the midst of this anointing, I have to obey the Lord. In the book of um, Isaiah, you look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, Isaiah chapter 41. Verse 1 to 6. He says here, Keep silence before me, O coastlands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together for judgment. Who, who raised up one from the east? Who in righteousness called him to his feet? Who gave the nations before him and made him rule over kings? Who gave them as a dust to his sword, as dr driven stubble to his bow? Who pursued them and passed safely by the way that he had not gone with his feet? Who has performed and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, am the first, and with the last I am he. The coastlands saw it and feared, the ends of the earth were afraid. They drew near and came. Everyone held his neighbor and said to his brother, Be of good courage. In verse 2, Who raised up one from the east? I have studied prophecy my entire life. Most scholars interpret this as either Abraham or Cyrus, prediction about Abraham or Cyrus. The only problem is trying to predict about Abraham uh, and put it to Abraham was because uh, it cannot be prophecy anymore because Isaiah is after the time of Abraham. So it was historical fact, whereas this remains a prophecy. And then some say it, 
it looks like Cyrus but cannot be Cyrus because some parts of it doesn't seem to fit Cyrus. It's more talking about the coastlands in verse 1 and verse 5. And so scholars are not sure what it actually means and, and where this prophecy is fulfilled. I want you to know this prophecy the Lord told me well, on February the 9th when he took me into that dimension he says you are the one I raised from the east and then the Lord told me that uh, uh, the coastlands represent all the coastlands that we have always been and uh, then Australia as you know is surrounded by sea coastland and Singapore next to the sea Malaysia, Peninsula, coastlands and uh, things that are very different if you were in the Middle East you're far far to a certain extent from uh, uh, the coastlands and here the Lord says in verse 6 verse 6 is talking about the Exodus everyone helped his neighbor and said to his brother be of good courage of course the sword we, we have to interpret to be uh, spiritual sword and uh, then the next one is chapter 46 verse 10 and 13 uh, 10 and 11 declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure calling a bird of prey from the east the Lord said this is you and the bird of prey is the eagle the Lord says this is you. The man who executes my counsel, counsel from a far country. The Lord says, this far country. And again, most scholars interpret it uh, to be either Abraham or Cyrus. The only problem is Cyrus was right next to Israel. It's not a far country. And Abraham, already Isaiah, how many years past Abraham? It's not a prophecy anymore. And uh, so, uh, the Lord says, this is you and that far country is Australia a very far country and uh, now the reason we're coming to these times the Lord says and uh, besides me being the voice that call at midnight the Lord says all these have been predestined now why is the Lord doing all these things in such a small tiny little group there have been a collection of prophecies about the end time one of those is a collection of visions by one Annie from um, South America. Remember the book I recommend, uh, Visions of Annie, I forgot her surname. And, um, so, uh, and her visions also spoke about some of the things at end times. And in one of her visions that she saw, she saw how that the Lord sends something into the earth but it was so insignificant so uh, small that Satan ignored it and then after Satan ignored it the Lord did something and then by the time Satan realized that it was something very important uh, it was too late uh, it became the very force that defeated him uh, as that is one of the visions that uh, of Annie's vision of the end time. And that is why in phase one, phase two, phase three, the Lord has wanted us to work incognito behind the scene and just do those other things. And uh, but it has gathered force. By September 18, 2014, it is a force that cannot be turned back. And so I have shown you the scriptures how when the time to separate the wheat and the tares, when the sickle has started to take the harvest, there are seven weeks of years. So the counting starts from then seven weeks of years right through the end times it's all harvest time 
So these are the scriptures that I brought forth that point to predictions in the Bible. So let me say the first thing that will happen as a point and with all this background is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It is a very important point that we cross because there are a fresh group of angels. Remember I keep talking about the fresh group of angels that are coming? Now I know what they are. They are all harvesters. They have come to harvest. It's time for the harvest. They all come with sickles in hand. We are the fruit. And the Lord is picking up fruit from all over the planet. And it takes the seven cycles. Now, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says here in verse 3, Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come. Will not come. Unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. So the first thing that will happen is the falling away. The second thing that will happen is the Antichrist. The man of sin will be revealed. One follows the other. Very clear reading from the Bible. Now we know that the Antichrist will be revealed in the eighth cycle. See, there are seven cycles. And then, after our second seven cycles, he entered the last week of Daniel, which is the eighth cycle. And uh, that is when a great tribulation takes place. So our seven cycles end in the rapture, and then begins the great tribulation. So it's all seven times seven plus one. The last one belongs to the Jewish period. All in one row together. Because God has moved time and space to put it all together. And uh, so the Antichrist will be revealed or allowed to be revealed for who he really is. During the church age in a seven times seven year cycle, he will just offer himself like a man of peace. But after the rapture, he will reveal himself as God. As a God. And it is one of his ways to explain away the rapture and to get people uh, to come under his influence. Because by that time, for some humans, are too late. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, it says, First, the falling away. Now, the Greek word falling away, if you check that out, is the word apostasia, which is the root word for the word apostasy. So literally it means, the day will not come, as you know there are two parts, second coming, the rapture, and then the second coming, which is at the end of the tribulation. And uh, there, is a two, there is two things that take place. First, the apostasy, then the son of perdition, the man of sin will be revealed. Now we know when he will be revealed in the great tribulation. But in the church age, the seven times seven years, from the time of midnight, as the seeker strikes and takes the harvest, that seven times seven years, is a division between the wheat and the tares. If you read Matthew chapter 25 right to the end, he has a last parable which talks about the judgment of nations where he separates the goats and the sheep. Talks about separation that takes place. And there's a separation between the foolish virgin and the wise virgin. And there's a separation between those who seem to think they have the talents, but they don't have the talent. They enter into weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
So I give you scriptures in four runs. Firstly, in Matthew 13, the tares will be burned because they don't belong to the church. And even in the South American lady, Annie, who saw her vision actually about in the, her vision must have been in the 70s, that long ago, predicting. Uh, her vision was predicting because I haven't entered the ministry yet. In those days, she was way before me. Uh, but by the time God called me, it is after God has already started download end times to people. But I have all uh, visions and uh, uh, recorded in those books that I recommended long ago. Uh, I think the book title is I Saw Heaven Opened by Annie. I forgot her surname. And um, some of you bought the books and those, those were in the Kaki book at time. And um, in, in her visions, in book one, book two, book three, which all combine together, especially in the second and third book, it's all about dividing the true church and the false church, the true house and the false house, the true garden and the false garden, all right through the division. But no one knows when the division starts. We know tonight, September 18, 2014, begins the separation between the apostate church and the true church. Begin the division between the wheat and the test. And I remind you again, the tares are among the church for 2,000 years, even right up to today, and they are not separated out. The tares do not belong to the kingdom of God, but they are grown side by side. So there's a parable of Matthew 13. I say that I give four runs. So first run is Matthew 13. Second run is Matthew 25, the ten virgins. Have a look at it again. It's a very important crossover. It's so important that actually there's a blowing of the trumpet also in the spiritual realm. It's as important as February the 9th is as important as uh, November the 14th and September 18th is very important. In Matthew 25, look carefully at the virgins and the, and the foolish virgins. In verse 11 and 12, when they say, Lord, Lord, open to us, the Lord says, I do not know you. See, we have always speculated what it means. Now I know what this means. The five foolish virgins represent the apostate church. I mean, uh, and when you look at the Greek word wise and foolish, it means more than wise and foolish. They could not bring a full interpretation in. It has a, an element of meaning true and false. But not normally used in the Greek. The foolish virgins represent the test. So in the second round at midnight, separation starts. Separation starts. And he said, hey, how come they seem to have some oil? Because they're tapping upon the grace in the church, which is no more for them. And the second parable in Matthew chapter 25 is the one with talents, five talents, and uh, two talents, and then the one with one talent. Now, if you look very carefully at the one with one talent, look very carefully. And uh, to all the others, he says, Well done, good and faithful servant. The two talent came and made two more talents. And he says in verse 23, Well done, good and faithful servant. 
but the one talent one. Look at what the one talent guy said about the law. You are a hard man. You reap where you didn't sow. You gather where you never scatter seed. These three things are not description of our Lord Jesus. <coughs> Jesus only takes what he saw. <coughs> Jesus is the most kind and loving man in the whole universe. Jesus gathered only what belonged to him. You know what that one talent man? He doesn't know the Lord. He represents the one who don't know the Master. He spoke ill of the Master. And lastly, he operated in fear. Because he was of the wrong department. Can anyone say that Jesus was a hard man? Can anyone say that God never, uh, no, God read what he never saw? Can anyone there say that God gathered what he never scattered and produced it? Of course not. All these are description of Satan. Satan is not a creator, he is a usurper. Satan steals those things that come from God and use it for his own means. This man, who seemed to be a part of the kingdom, does not belong to the kingdom. He was serving the wrong kingdom. Again, in this third run, there is a separation. Now look at what happened to this man. The Lord said, You wicked and lazy servant. Now the only other time God called people wicked is they are actually wicked and do wicked things. In nature they are wicked. And the Lord implied, you knew where I was. He didn't actually do it, but he just flowed along. And all these things. Not that he actually did it. And then he took of all those things. Nothing came. The Lord is going to take back everything. In the end, the Lord will take back everything that the enemy has stolen. But look at what happened to this man. Cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness in verse 13. That person is not safe. Outer darkness is not a place that is safe at all. Outer darkness, where there are weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is not heaven, my friends. That is a part of hell. This man was cast into hell. For... A long, long time, we couldn't interpret this parable because we cannot understand how can, you know, how can Christians lose their salvation kind of thing. We know it's not that easy to lose salvation, although you could do a sin unto death by denying Jesus. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20, 25, 26, where you can reject Jesus. Or Hebrews chapter 6 also. Uh, but there are a lot of roadblocks. Uh, or sin against the Holy Spirit, or reject Jesus. But this one is cast into hell. Now we know. He represents the apostate church. He represents a tear that was invaded in the ministry of God. Because there are many in the ministry who seem like they're okay, but they're theirs. Of course, the last one which will take place when Jesus' actual second coming come. But what you can see is the difference between the goat and the sheep. So again, there's a separation between whether you're sheep or goat. In all three parables, there's a separation. See, we never fully understand Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Now we know. All three parables are about the wheat and the tares. And all three parables are about the true church 
and the apostate church. So what will happen after September 18, 2014? It's when a fresh reserve batch of angelic beings come forth and they will now start taking the house. Uh, all those things we talk about, about all the manifestation of a uh, ten-year, ten-year period, will still take place. Where the greatest growth that we will see is when the other uh, angel come and join me, and then from 2000 and 2020, 2021 will be preparation years to go throughout the whole world. 2022 onwards, we will actually launch worldwide, and. This message, we will be preaching to the whole planet, every nation, with signs and wonders. As God sent Moses with a rod to do signs and wonders, God will assign uh, many angels to go along with me and with many of you <coughs> who will be sent on my behalf and on behalf of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Commander in chief to go and preach his message with signs and wonders. <coughs> there will be a time for that. But this chapter 25 is a separation. We know it begins on September 18, 2014. <coughs> Second thing that will take place. In September 18, 2014, <coughs> there's a Lord coming with His saints. Now I want you to look very carefully at the places where it talk about the Lord's coming. <coughs> and now, uh, Tells us here. Uh, chapter 24, first. Verse 31. Now when the Lord speak, sometimes different portions are for different time. So let's look at it in Matthew 24. Matthew 24, most people will agree, most scholars will agree. That from verse 4 right to verse 14 is definitely part of the church age. Because it talks about the gospel. This gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world. Then in verse 15, where the abomination of desolation is, then you know, in verse 16, when you say, Let those in Judea flee to the mountain. They wonder which mountain. Now we know. To the area of Mount Nebo and Mount Gilead, all those other mountainous region. And uh, so in verse 15 onwards, we know in verse 20, 21, it says that there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world. No, nor ever shall be. It's the one and only place on planet Earth in time and space. The Great Tribulation. And unless those days are shortened, no flesh should be saved. And then in verse 23, the, it changed again. Verse 23 is, is generic. It could refer to the church age. And uh, it says, if anyone says, look, here is Christ, don't believe it. Or there is Christ, don't believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders to deceive if possible even the elect. So it's generic, can be applied to both the tribulation years or church age. And, uh, and same with verse 26. But what about verse 27? See, we are looking verse by verse, all the second coming. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Now tell me, what is that lightning? What 
what is that lightning that comes from the east and flashes to the west? Because Mount of Olives is actually not really east, it's Middle East. And are you saying that Jesus has to come from the east side? Are you saying that uh, Jesus is not coming from the top down? So what is this lightning? It is the seven thunders lightning. And the east has been chosen. Your privilege. Singapore was chosen to be the place where on November 14, the seven thunders is released. And God chose people from the east to be part of all this prayer drive. And thank God also for those of you who join us from now Australia is more or less part of the Pacific Eastern region. And of course Australia likes to consider itself part of Asia, but the Asia say, hey no, you're not part, you're somewhere Pacific. <laughs> Officially, it's, you know, it's uh, Asia Pacific region. And uh, it's all in the East. So, when you begin to analyze and scrutinize every verse, you will find us mentioned somewhere. Let me tell you what that lightning is. That lightning is at the stroke of midnight. The seven times seven last years just flow. Because the lightning has begun on February the 9th, 2012, when Pergamos glory came down. Now, you know why we are going around the world building altars to spread, to secure to proclaim the victory at Pergamos. It's not about me, not about uh, a prophet, not about anyone. It's not to boost up any human ego. It is to proclaim the coming of the glory of the Lord. See, when the glory of the Lord came down in Pergamos, in another sermon, I talk about the significance of those places. The glory of the Lord came down. The light that shone was so great that the universe angels saw it. And on August 2012, when we were in Madaba for the first time, 30 angels from three sections of the galaxy came. The section that we call the pristine side, which never fell, among the two thirds that never fall. The boundary angels who got the boundary between the section that fell and the section that never fell. And the warring angels section that defeated Satan when he rebelled and are uh, supervising those fallen worlds and keeping them in check. There were 10 representations each from those. They came because they saw the lightning of the glory. They came down on February the 9th. We humans, life goes on, doesn't even know what happened. Just like humans don't know what happened on the first Christmas day. There was a lot of hurrying and barring, you know, buying and selling, celebrating, uh, home reunion, and uh, all over the Roman Empire because Caesar Augustus called everyone go hometown for the census. So that there was no place, no hotel that was available for our Lord Jesus Christ, and Mary has to give birth in a manger. Where the animals are, a barn. Only a few shepherds 
knew and that is because only the angel told them. If the angel didn't tell the shepherd, do you know that no one knows? No one knows of that great wonderful day when God came into the human form in flesh. See, we humans are so dull, we don't sense it. But angels from other galaxies far, far away saw the lightning. The Pergamos glory has a really like lightning shine through all the earth. But it was those from the east. Now I know why the Lord took my spirit and brought me there because I had to be there to witness it. And the people who live in the east were privileged to be with people who are part of it. Now thank God for those of you online who join us from all the other countries, Africa, United States, South America, Canada, and all the other regions, Europe. This is just happened to be Bible prophecy. In the end, it belongs to the whole world. Now, we in the East, I'm just going to add a little footnote here, are grateful to the great nations of England and America before they threw the Bible out of the schools and the courts. Because these are nations that were fortresses to biblical and the Bible teachings. America was founded originally based on the Bible and one thing good about the uh, British colony is they brought Christianity to it. We are grateful for the theologians, the, the preachers, uh, the men and women of God who had labor in the West. Uh, Christianity started in the Middle East, it went to the West and all of Asia and all in the East are grateful for the missionaries that come has well, converted our our ancestors, brought Christianity to us, and today we are Christians because of you. But it so happened that God has resolved that those in the East for this end time move, and even Smith Wiggers were sorry, and thought about one of the greatest revival that will come when he was he was in Australia. And he talked about how Australia will be part of it. He saw it. And all these incognito trips in building the altar here and there are spreading the lightning of the glory of God that came at Pergamos. The Bible is fulfilled in your eyes within and we don't realize it. I remember the last trip that we, we went to seven churches reprise in May, June. We brought the church of Colossae to replace the church of Laodicea. Also part of Bible prophecy. A lot of things we are actually fulfilling the Bible. So, as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. That is why the whole world will know just like in the vision dream I had in 1997. When the time is come, we will tell them. Exactly. They say, the Lord's coming is coming, is near. As we approach the year is coming, we'll say, the year is coming soon. As we approach the month, we will tell. Until the last week, the actual last week, which will be a week of praise and worship. So there is the lightning. So you always wonder, okay, there's a lightning. Uh, what does the lightning do? It is close from the east to the west. If you're talking about just the glory of God, it's actually from, from the throne room right downwards. Like the book of Revelation. You saw the book of Revelation? When God opened the, 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 the inner glory and then it flashed down from heaven to the earth. It's not from east to west. It's from heaven to the earth. But this one is different. East to West because it represents this move. And now, uh, so you bring the coming 
of the Son of Man on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angel in verse 31, chapter 30, 30, 24, with a great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather his elect from the four winds. Now, verse 31 can apply to, as I said, we analyze verse by verse and see whether it's generic. Generic means it can apply to the church age, it can apply to the tribulation. Another tribulation we know it will be under uh, Enoch and Elijah. They are predestined to lead that move. Uh, here, it can also apply to the church age. And it says, there will be a sound of the trumpet. Let me tell you, on September 18, 2014, the trumpet has sounded and the clock strikes midnight. Shout! And it is time for the gathering. The in-gathering. Which is why I'm telling you, the world will be different after September 18. Because time for the world has ceased. It's no more human free time. It's no more the free time that God allowed the wheat and the test to grow. It is now under God's time of gathering. And every part is precise. Everything is chop, 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 seven chops. Because time has stopped for me. It's the time of the gathering. And angels, this fresh batch of angels that are released, are in charge of gathering. Gathering them together. Gathering the elect from the four winds, which represent north, south, east, and west. From one end of heaven to the other. It is time for the gathering. Then he talked in verse 32, learn the parable of the fig tree, which we know represent the formation of Israel in 1948. So most of the things we went through uh, has been done. Then it was 36, 37. But all that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven. Uh, day and hour, it didn't say year, month, or season. Because in the same verse, it talks about uh, season. When it says uh, to them, uh, Learn the parable of the fig tree. You can tell the summer is near. Do you know that when you tell summer is near, it's not the season? When you talk about season, you're counting by the month. That means that even though we don't know the day or the hour, you will know the month and the year. Because we know when you talk about summer, spring, autumn, or winter, we're not talking about years. We have to go within one year, which is months, a measurement of months. Alright, so here we continue. As in verse 27, the days of Noah, so will be the coming assignment. And we know when that takes place. The days of Noah actually synchronized with the last seven years. When they are locked in time span to the time of Noah and to the nanosecond after the thousand years period. They're all in the what I call quantum time. And, uh, <clears throat> and we talk about uh, the area of two in a field or two, uh, two taken. That one can be taken. Uh, I, I don't think it applies that much to the rapture because we know that people won't be in the field. The true church will actually be worshipping. And the rapture takes place. Nobody will be out, you know, doing something in the field. Everybody will know and will be in worship. So, that part is more talking about uh, the Antichrist coming forth and starting to slaughter people. And getting ready. So this part can apply to the tribulation period. And uh, then in verse 45 to 51, who is that faithful and wise servant? Now, notice the word wise is used together with faithful. And uh, 
Then there is also in verse 48, the evil servant. When do you ever see Jesus apply the word evil to his church? Never, right? Or evil to his ministers? Never, right? But he's applying it because this is a tear. This is a tear, not a weed. This is an apostate church. Alright. So you talk about the evil servant that is there. And again, verse 51, weeping, gnashing of teeth. So the evil servant is lost. Apostate church again. So if we analyze some of these scriptures and the trumpet sound that is coming forth, we realize that at each place, remember how there were uh, seven uh, seals and uh, then after the seven seals, they were followed by uh, seven trumpets and then seven trumpets followed by seven bowls and, and it's being blown and those referred a lot of them to the tribulation years you know there will be the blowing of the trumpets during each of the next seven years starting from September 18, 2018 when midnight strikes on the earth I mean it's significant to know that the earth has entered its midnight hour and the sequel has begun All heaven and earth shakes when the trumpet is blown. Now let's look at the other part of the second coming in 1 Corinthians 15, which is primarily in reference to the rapture. 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15, it tells us here <clears throat> Looking for a good place to start uh, reading from uh, Let's read from uh, verse 20 But now Christ is risen from the dead And has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep for since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his order. Christ the first fruits, afterward those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father. When he puts an end to all rule, all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. And that's why there is a rapture and the last batch, the last batch that sees the rapture will not die. Now let me jump ahead to verse 51. Behold, Paul says, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. Now this part refer to the rapture. We know that there are other trumpets that will be blown in the tribulation years in the book of Revelation. So those set of trumpets, the seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls belong in a different dispensation. They all happen in the last seven years of Daniel. Now notice the word last trumpet. Do you see the word last? Because let me tell you, there are seven trumpets. The main one that is blown on September 18, 2014 by the cross midnight. 
Then, at each cycle ends, the first cycle begins and ends in September 2020, 18, 2020. Then it's blown again. And then that finishes the seven years of prosperity. And then begins the years of famine. Fa and remember, after midnight, answer, after midnight, I mean the figurative midnight, September 18th, we enter into a time and period like the world has never seen. I repeat, the world has never seen. So we will enter a seven year period of prosperity like the world has never seen. And I thought about something's happening. Then, in 2020, we will enter a period of seven years of famine and earthquake and upheaval of world weather that the world has never seen. Everything the world has never seen. And then enter into 2034, 2027 to 2034. In 2027, ends the second cycle, begins the third cycle, that ends in 2034. The first cycle is prosperity of seven years, second cycle is famine, third cycle is a period of war like the world has never seen. Never seen before. And the things that are going to happen we see countries eliminated. In the middle, in the Africa, 50 countries become about 9 countries. In the Middle East, many countries also reduce. We have never seen that before. Everything that happens after September 18, 2014, is things the world has never seen because it is no more the time of the world. It is time of God and His angels cleansing the earth. So the first thing that we talked about was the apostate church. That would come for. The second thing that we talked about is this cycle, seven year cycle with the trumpets that point to things the world has never seen. The third thing is the march from heaven begins. Remember there are seven heavens As time on earth ceases, and as the sequel according to Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 9 is cutting, God says, time is now measured. It is not harvesting time. You see, it's full grown. Now the earth is being harvested. The whole earth is being harvested. Time of man has ended. It's time of dispensation of God and His angels. And of course, the body of Christ, working with God. It's all chop, 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 chop. The earth is being chopped. But the third thing is from heaven, the march has begun. Now, it takes only a moment for Christ to descend. But what we don't realize, is the descent has already started from heaven. So God comes down because of His great power. He comes down from the seven heaven. And so the seven heaven began to envelope. Because our universe includes all the seven heavens in different dimensions. So all of seven heaven comes down in seven cycle to the sixth heaven to the third heaven and they already have an advanced team you know who is the advanced team the seven spirits the seven angels or the seven churches that is just the advanced team to prepare the bride from September 18 2014 on earth time in heaven, there is a declaration. It is finished. 
and the march downwards begin. And you know what it does? It cleanses the whole universe, layer by layer. Until it reaches to the third heaven, all the saints in the third heaven join. They're waiting at the third heaven. And they start coming forth and cleanse and then they come to the planet Earth and all evil and all the rebellion is pushed and squashed together and then by the time of the rapture we are already there with Christ and then the final push is in Revelation chapter 12 when Michael and his archangel push Satan to the planet Earth for the tribulation. Immediately after the rapture. As the church is raptured, Satan is pushed down. Because we figure out that if he has to pursue the woman in the wilderness in chapter 12 for 1260 days, and since the second half of the tribulation there's literally no one else around who is good, he has to be the first half. And for him to have the chance to chase them for the first three and a half, it has to happen at the beginning part of the tribulation and not at the middle. Pure logic. And so the push has begun. But at the same time, all those things we have spoken also come to pass. As I said, that we progress into first heaven, second heaven, third heaven, fourth heaven, sixth heaven, seventh heaven. We also become more and more heavenly. So, it's a simultaneous thing happening, which tells us tonight as we realize the midnight hour of the whole planet Earth. The midnight hour, and you don't know what the Earth is. The Earth is like the capital of God's creation. When the, you know, just like on the Earth now, we all use local time but our local time was invented when they invented Greenwich Mean Time then they measure time by the uh, latitudes around the earth and then they adjust it a bit according to nations they make the international daylight uh, time zone and then they adjust nations adjust their time according to the political boundaries but it's by a standard Greenwich Mean Time, we can measure time. And everyone can coordinate. The whole universe is measured on Earth time. Not, not exactly our natural Earth time. But the whole universe perfection. The whole universe progress. The whole universe being held back is based on what happened on the Earth. So that when the Earth completes its time at midnight all the universe knows and the march begins you saw Jesus coming with all his saints and glory all his angels now who is Jesus going to come with in his second coming all the saints and the rapture people the last bit to join him to come at the end of the seven years of tribulation. But Jesus is coming with all the glory of heaven. Nothing hold back. All the glory of the Father. And in heaven, that starts from September 18, 2014. Now you know how important this fast is. Now you understand why the angels have been so eager to download so much revelation in two years, three years, since 2012. Why they so eager to complete so many things? Because the earth time was ending. Earth time was ending. And they have to download and seal everything possible that is there. And why 
every one of you must receive what you need to receive by September 18. Why there's so much sealing taking place? Because earth time is finished. We're living on harvest time, which is not part of earth time. That belongs to God, who is in control of that. God is just following the laws and the pattern He set in Deuteronomy chapter 16. The seven last weeks of years. And all this is coming to a close. We have 13 more days to the close of humanity's time. Literally, it is the end of days. It is a significant time. Those that need to be sealed need to be sealed. Those that need to enter need to come in. Enter into them, which is in the fullness of God. Because God has come to gather His bride. Remember why I say, number one, the apostate church. You'll be separated from the apostate church. Don't be surprised to find among the people of the world or the people on, in various, various communities and churches, some of your best pals were pets. And then finally you know, oh, no wonder every time I with them, they suck all the life out of you. Let them go and join the apostate church. you be gathered together the true church of Jesus Christ. And number two, all the other cycles that are coming are things that have never been seen in the time of human history because it's no more human history. Number three, heaven has closed the chapter on the earth and has started cleansing the universe. How I know these things? Because the archangel, the tree that is above three sections of the earth, complete their work. Guess what? On September 18. Very significant time. It's a spiritual time and earthly time match. So let's prepare ourselves. In this prayer, as we pray, locking into God and just let your spirit catch into those things which God has. Let's pray. Father, we ask, even as we consider your word, we walk with fear and anger. How great is the responsibility you have given unto us? We ask, O oh God, that those words that you have asked to be delivered, let it come upon ears whom the Holy Spirit has quickened. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is speaking. We are living in days when the Bible prophecies are being fulfilled in front of our very eyes. We know, God, that these are not times, oh God, that we can consider them normal anymore. But these are the end of days. And we are living a borrowed time after September 18, the time of the ingathering. Strengthen your angels who have been strengthening us as guardians ministers together with us. Continue, Lord, to do all that you want to do with this special batch of angels that send forth throughout all the planet. Indeed, you are gathering the one true church. Our greatest delight is finally Jesus' prayer in John 17 is coming to when you take out of this planet of a people whom you had chosen to be your glorious church. 
as you prepare those who are here and those yet to be born in this next seven times seven years for this end of times to do all that is needed to be done O oh God in this harvest time for harvest time is begun everything that has to be sealed is sealed with September 18 thank you Father God for releasing your great work teach us to pray but we have never prayed before we are in the middle of a fast, in fact, 27 days. Teach us a lot to pray like we've never prayed before. Anoint our lips to pray. Anoint our hearts and our minds to understand and to pray. Let your spirit of prayer and grace and supplication be upon our spirits. And tonight, Whatever else needs to be sealed and prayed through, let it be prayed for in every life here, in those who are hearing online this message. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise God. Let's all right.